Well, good evening again. And tonight we're going to really go back over the story. Well, that's what Frances does. She, she goes back over her storyline and she tries to fill in, color in the picture with um, how, she, how she lives out her faith and how she shares her faith on this journey. And so she calls it a holiday work. We're going to begin there today. I only wish that all the tired workers at home would renew their strength and spirits by such holiday work abroad as lies within the reach of many who fancy it far out of their reach. I didn't know till the summer before last what a combination of king enjoyment and benefit to health with opportunities of usefulness and open doors innumerable was to be found in a pedestrian tour by unprotected females. I like that. Quite quaint, isn't it? This too, without difficulties or discomforts worth calling such, and at the very much smaller outlay than is supposed possible by those who travel in the usual expensive way and think that going to Switzerland for six or eight weeks, spending £50 at the least, much less than half that sum will suffice for a tour as ours. And lest it should be thought that exceptional strength is necessary, I may promise that both my friend and myself had been thoroughly overworked and were obliged to seek rest, that neither of us is very strong, and that a walk of a mile or two is the extent of our English powers. Of course, we chose the inexpensive route via New Haven and Dieppe to Paris, and thence by night train to Belfort on the frontier, where we arrived at 9 a.m. on June the 29th, 18 and 71. As we had slept pretty fairly, having had a carriage to ourselves by reason of the guard's nat nat natural sympathy for unprotected females, and having been able to lie down full length by reason of going second class instead of first, we were not tired, and we intended to proceed. But the train to Baal and Lucerne had just left. Say une désorganisation complète, is what she says. No information whatever was to be had, either at Paris or at Belfort itself, as to trains beyond. And unless you got hold of a German official, you wouldn't know what was happening. Moreover, every German train was arranged to depart just before the corresponding French one got in, and vice versa, apparently for the purpose of spite. And so it came to pass, as a result of the war, that we were nearly six hours waiting. When there is no one to wait and to be anxious for you, and no one to arrange for you but your two selves, and no fixed plan beyond today, and that day and all its hours committed to a Heavenly Father's guidance, disappointment becomes impossible, and the crossing of one's intentions constantly results in the most evident guiding to something better. Now, isn't that a bit of advice for us all today and for tomorrow and this week? So it was with our intent, detention at Belfort, which was no part of our own program. We set off through the town to the fortifications. Why should we not begin at once? Said my friend. So that's E. Clay is what they call her, and before we were always referred to as E. So, setting the example, she began offering French tracts and portions of the Bible to almost everyone we met. And a wonderful two or three hours we had. Such eagerness for the little books, such gratitude, such attentive listening as we tried to speak of Jesus, such tears as we touched the cord of suffering still vibrating among these poor people to whom war had been an awful reality. Surely God sent us. No one to whom we spoke, but told us of husbands or sons or brothers fallen in the siege or elsewhere, or else of terrible losses and poverty. Some to whom we gave tracts went away reading and soon came back begging for more. Poor ma mère, poor Anomi. We went into a large room where several wounded soldiers lay, while women sat at work. Here again, all was earnest attention and gratitude. Many thanks, merci infiniment, said one poor fellow. At last we made our way up onto the fortifications where probably none but the unprotected females would have been allowed. 
Our small books secured us the respect of the few soldiers and the many workmen. We realized a little of what war means as we wandered about the half-ruined stronghold, looked down upon a church with scarcely a square yard of roof intact and houses in every stage of shatter and desolation or at best poorly patched up, patched up for bare shelter. Before we left, a deputation came to us from a party of workmen who had been reading our tracks during their dinner to ask for a few more that they might take them to their comrades who were employed in another part of the town and who would be too happy to possess them. As, as we returned through the town, we found many waylaying us. At one point, which they knew we must pass, at least 30 persons were waiting and pressed around us, begging for more tracks. We had only a few leaflets left with Rock of Ages in French and German, but they eagerly, they eagerly accepted these as well. I have since regretted that it did not occur to me at that moment to sing Rock of Ages. We reached Lucerne that night, and the next morning we steamed down the lake. It would have been contrary to our travelling principles to pay first-class fare for the privilege of sitting among the unsociable English, aft with funnels and paddle boxes right between us, and the magnificent scenery opening out before us. So we took second-class tickets, thereby securing for half price a clear front view with nothing but transparent air between us and the increasing loveliness ahead, and also the advantage of being able to be among the local people who were all politeness to us. We thus had also the benefits of some charming Swiss songs, sung by a girl's school out for holiday. They lent us their little songbooks to follow the music, and they were delighted at receiving the little books, the little gospels and tracts in return, which might, by his blessing, we pray, put a new song in their mouths. From Altdorf, at the other end of the lake, our long-anticipated real pedestrian tour began. Our plan was this. Our luggage consisted of a small carpet bag apiece. I take it that's a suitcase. Every inch and every ounce had been considered and economised, though even these were discovered on further experience to contain sur super, super, pardon me, Many things we don't need. These bags we sent on each morning by post or diligence, or if on grand routes, by baggage mule, country cart, or small boy if off the track, to whatever place we thought we could reach in the day without undue fatigue. And here we always find them all right. Average expense? A few pence. We started at 4 or 5 a.m., walking on till we felt inclined to stop and rest, our first halt being given to leisurely reading and prayer in some grand and lonely mountain oratory, a plan which we find more pleasant and profitable than devoting the whole time to it indoors before starting. And then we strolled on again, halting or taking refreshment just as and when we felt inclined, resting for several hours in the heat of the day and making another stage or two in the afternoon. We carried little tiny knapsacks. Bags are a great mistake, being more fatiguing to carry. These held tracts and Bible portions, a biscuit and a hard egg, and the barest necessities in case of missing our carpet bags or altering our plan for the night. As Switzerland is the land of hotels and travellers, such a tour as ours is easier than it would be anywhere else. And unless you are out in a very out-of-the-way place, you seldom go three miles without an opportunity of getting a meal, or six without a fair chance of beds. We began very gradually. Our first walk was only two miles, but in a fortnight we found ourselves doing 14 to 20 miles in a day without getting tired. I'm going to stop there just now and pause. There's something about Frances's style and her manner of life and her manner of ministry that has about it a degree of what I would call that naturalness that is sometimes lost in our day. What I mean is just that everywhere you are, you are naturally who you are in Jesus Christ. You never are not in Christ. 
I have another book here, and maybe someday I will take sections out of this book to read. I'm not sure. This book's called The Annals of My Life. It's by the first minister in Portrush, who was the Reverend Jonathan Simpson. It's quite uh, a story. It's an amazing story. There only are a very, very few copies of this book in print today, and I have been privileged to have two of them, one of which I will gladly leave to this congregation when I someday move on. But Jonathan Simpson records in his, in his story of being visited by a friend one day. He came to visit him in Port Rush, and of course, as was normal back in those days, he would take him, and today of course the same, he would take him out to see the Giant's Causeway, Dundas Castle, and some of the sites that are famous and important. But on that particular journey, which was by horse and trap, he records that the journey took quite a while because every time he would come across somebody in the field working along the roadside there, the path, he would stop the horse, stop the cart, he would jump out and take with him his little brown paper bag full of gospel tracts. He would go to the people in the, in, out in the fields and he would hand them out to those who could read. Or if they couldn't read, they could find someone who could read it to them. He talks about how many people and how much time it took to do that. But I couldn't help thinking about the same sort of style. Well, Jonathan Simpson was in 18 and 40, and he was here until, well, nearly the, the 1900. And um, it was during the same period. It was during through the same times and experiences. Great evangelical movements were going on at that time, of course. But isn't it lovely to see... How in the normal course of events, people who have a winsomeness can just find a way to use every brief encounter. And that's a phrase that has become very special to me personally. Every brief encounter. Because that's the best way to share our faith with people, isn't it? Not some necessarily special ambush, you know, where you kind of wait for them and jump out at them, metaphorically speaking. But just in the normal everyday life, through kindness through conversation. And aren't there so many more conversation opportunities just now? I find myself in lots of queues. And isn't it normal to turn around to the person who's two meters away from you or whatever distance it is, will be as the time goes on and say, and how are you and how's life and how are you coping with this change and whatever the way the story opens up. You know, I think we need to be much more inclined. Maybe literature is not what people read today. I'm not so sure. I think people are less inclined to read, but I do know that people are still inclined to share a story with you or hear your story. But as we do go out and pray that God would guide us in our footsteps every day, I'm perfectly sure that he has a journey of adventure and opportunity for you and I every day. I think for most of us, we're just scared to say anything. You don't need to, you don't, all you need to do is show them that you're interested in them. Show people that you care about them. Ask them how they're doing. Just simple things. See how the Holy Spirit leads the conversation. And it's not a bad idea to have a little booklet or two in your pocket. To keep something, or even a, a little anything that can point them to a website or to a, a special story or whatever it may be. Whatever's familiar, whatever's helpful to you, whatever is spoken to you. And thereby, you'll be doing holiday work as well. Well, tomorrow we'll continue with our holiday work and we'll see where we go. And I'm not sure. We've got various parts of this book and we'll select little parts till we come to the end of this week and we'll see what happens after that. I'm not sure if we'll go beyond that and hopefully things will open up a little for us all in our lives. But we'll see what the Lord does. And would you pray that God would guide us so that I'll be conscious of his leading as I also select for now and maybe as the weeks and months ahead in the Lord's will. But it's been a joy to spend another little time with you this evening. Mm -hmm.